one. What is GDC? Sorry, I was looking at something on Twitter. Dan has lost a lot of weight, by the way. Good for him. No, 12 month subscriber. Who was uh Game Developer Conference is hosting Melanie Mac. Isn't that like the weird? Isn't Melanie Mac that weird fucking like right wing Twitch streamer who's like always talking about how she loves God and shit? No, GDC is. No, that's not GDC. That's games done quick. GDQ is games done quick. I'm waiting 17 years for today. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're looking at the biggest bombshells from Investigation Discovery's four-part expose about Nickelodeon. Everyone knew it from New York to California. So who would we go to? Who could we possibly go to to complain about this? Amanda Bynes replaced Katrina Johnson. I had less and less and less and then no time with Dan. So the new favorite had arrived. I was out. From 1994 to 1997, Katrina Johnson was the youngest cast member of Nickelodeon's hit sketch comedy series, All That. During her time on the show, she was one of Dan Schneider's favorite young actors. And as she recalled in the docuseries, he even considered Ross Perot. giving Johnson her own show. But as she got older, her appearance became an issue for the producers, particularly her weight, which they called attention to. I mean, that stuck with me. Damn, they were fat shaming a child? That's cold blooded, dude. You can't be the fat one. Like, I still hear those words in my head to this day. With the addition of rising star Amanda Bynes in 1996, Johnson felt she was progressively sidelined by her former mentor, and she left the show a year later. Schneider would go on to be a significant figure in shaping Bynes' successful career, which some people, including her parents, saw as concerning. Maybe at the time, people viewed it as comedy, but I think now... Yeah, that's kind of wild when you think about what Dan Schneider looks like. Bro, you're fat shaming a baby, like, you know, the fuck's going on here? Where's Platypus? I can read his, his comment right now. Well, Dan Schneider was never in front of the camera at that point, so he didn't have to actually lose the weight. And as a matter of fact, his extra pounds actually allowed him to be even funnier. Uh, and therefore, that's, that's how he came up with the best foot jokes, which are objectively funny for children. Now, some people are very uncomfortable with the application. Gender discrimination and a toxic work environment. In the late 90s, Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider created a spin-off series to all that centered on Amanda Bynes. For Christy Stratton and Jenny Kilgan, the only women in the Amanda Show writer's room, it was a dream job. I had been in LA for seven years, and so it felt very satisfying that um, someone was gonna pay me to Right, comedy. However, there were red flags from the start. Stratton and Kilgan were made to share one salary between them, which isn't exactly legal. And along with other female staffers, they allegedly endured Schneider's misogynistic behavior, degrading jokes and harassment. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I'm not, like, I'm not proud of it, and I'm also like, Ugh. thinking about it now. Yeah, it's like, oh boy, I, I just think of that poor girl and what she had to, you know, go through. Stratton was reportedly fired shortly before the end of season one. Kilgan quit just days into season two and filed a lawsuit against the production company for gender discrimination, ultimately settling out of court. The awful experience had a lasting impact on their careers in the television industry. I knew that this was the end of my career, so it had better be worth it. Like, it had better stop and to learn that it didn't stop, that it was all for nothing. Sexualizing the female casts. In the early 2020s, people revisiting Nickelodeon shows from their childhood have noticed that some content was undeniably bizarre, bordering on the explicit. Once I saw it again as an adult was when that memory came back. So I was like, oh, 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 wasn't funny. 
It still isn't funny to me. Old webisodes of Ariana Grande went viral, showing her victorious and salmon cat character Cat Valentine attempting to juice a potato, among other suggestive acts. Former employees also noted that Schneider was instrumental in choosing revealing clothing for the young cast and writing adult jokes into the episodes. It was clear that, that there was a permissibility around these sexualized jokes with children. It was par for the course. Like, strange things amused Dan, and that was just one of the things he thought was funny. Prior to Quiet on set, Zoe 101 cast member Alexa Nicholas had already been vocal about her discomfort working on the show. Although she doesn't appear in the docuseries, they reference Jeanette McCurdy's 2022 memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died, in which she detailed the creator's verbal abuse and inappropriate interactions. He'll call people idiots, buffoons, stupid, dumb, sloth. What do you think of this? Getting pre-prepared food delivered to you a few times a week is not a luxury and should be accessible to everyone regardless of income, but capitalism has convinced you otherwise? What? I mean, I don't know. It seems like a bait post. All right, let's just get back to this video. I am... My ADHD is all over the fucking place, dude. My ADHD is all over the place. I hate... <gasps> Dragon's Dogma 2 has now been downloaded. I... I... Cannot... I don't know why. I don't know what is going on. I cannot pay attention to anything right now. My brain is fucking doo-doo today. Happy, careless, and spineless. The creator knows how to make someone feel worthless. Inappropriate adult humor. I remember someone from Nickelodeon sitting with us and saying like, oh, does this mean, you know, this dirty thing? And Dan was like, no. Why would you think that's like tainted, like you've tainted something? And they were like, okay. Kids programming tends to have some jokes and references for the parents, but Dan Schneider shows like All That and The Amanda Show often crossed a line. From character names with slang terms to costumes with phallic imagery, it was clear to some people behind the scenes what the writers were alluding to. Wait, why is this in the show? What is what is the joke here exactly? There's this weird element of like, they all were able to like pull a fast one and get away with it. And that's like a part of The Pickle Boy shit is like indefensible too, especially because, you know, who the Pickle Boy is, right? Fucking pedophile rapist. The joke. Crew members and parents would notice questionable jokes and sexual innuendo, but the environment made it difficult to express these concerns, especially to Schneider. And as former cast members recall in the docuseries, they were often uncomfortable with the material, even if they didn't know exactly what the innuendos meant. I'm just Wait, I missed the pickle boy part? Jesus, what the fuck is this? Looking back at it, it's just very strange. Frankly, it was just uncomfortable. Traumatizing on air. Um, the pickle, the pickle boy one is uh, Brian Peck, who's a very famous voice coach, uh, an acting coach that was also very, I guess, not so famously, but famously now, um, abusing uh, Drake. Uh, what's his name? I forget. Drake from Drake and Josh, and uh, Drake Bell. Thank you. Uh, when he was a child and it didn't like he was prosecuted criminally for it went to prison for uh went to prison for 16 months and then uh i mean got a very light sentence for just like very obvious sexual abuse of a child like sexual molestation continued sexual assault of a child And then when he came out of prison, he was rehired by Disney for two episodes. And there were people and the, on the Zach and Cody cast or Zach and Cody production team that had written letters to the judge about how they would hire this man in a heartbeat and how the judge should give him a lower sentence. Um, really grim stuff. Anyway, the point is, Brian Peck was doing this and his character on the show that they made jokes about directed by Dan Schneider was uh, the pickle boy uh, where he would, uh, they would talk about like how he's um, you know, he has a bad pickle and he would just feed people his pickle. And in one of the episodes, he actually 
puts a pickle through a glory hole and makes Ray Romano eat his pickle. Just like penis innuendo. Air dares. Nickelodeon's on-air dare segment was essentially fear factor for kids, challenging the young actors to endure gross and scary dares on camera. All that cast members Kyle Sullivan and Brian Christopher Hearn recounted moments on the show that made them extremely uncomfortable for themselves and their castmates. Those were particularly traumatic, and they were sort of designed to be. The whole idea was that you would have to do something scary on camera, and they got pretty scary. Hearn had one particularly awful challenge of getting covered in peanut butter and laying down as multiple dogs licked it off of him on stage. In the video clip from the segment, he clearly says that he doesn't like it. I don't like this. <laughs> I feel all drunk. Sullivan pointed out just how torturous it could be, with challenges that involved worms, dead fish, and scorpions. Young viewers would likely see this as funny, but for the actual participants, it was anything but. I think that people kind of just look at us and go, you made some money, so what are you complaining about? And yeah, we collect our money, sure, but... At what cost? Racist sketches starring black child actors. My time on Nickelodeon played a big part in how I dealt and still deal with racial issues. With shows such as Keenan and Kel, Nickelodeon always seemed to value and encourage diversity. But in the docuseries, All That stars Giovanni Samuels and Brian Christopher Hearn said that compared to their white castmates, they felt, quote, overlooked. I understood the magnitude of being the token black girl but I didn't realize how significant that was until years later. Hearn recalled a hurtful incident when a strange okay. character required him to wear a bodysuit and someone offensively joked about the skin tone color it should be. But fearing repercussions, he didn't say anything back. Whoever was doing my makeup at the time was kind of like, hand on my shoulder, like, it's gonna be okay. Like, don't worry about that he just said. Samuels and Hearn also occasionally had to play into racial stereotypes. Hearn's mother, Tracy, discussed a sketch that she viewed as racist, one where her son pretended to sell cookies but believed it was made to seem like he was really selling illegal substances. Jason Handy Allegations As a production assistant on Nickelodeon shows All That and The Amanda Show, Jason Handy was a familiar face to young actors and their parents. I don't know why you guys are clowning on Disney. Once somebody serves their sentence and pays their due to society, they should be allowed to move on with their lives. What do people accept? Felons to be unemployed for the rest of their lives? and not get a job after getting out. Oh, you are trolling. Okay, I was going to say, brother, I think it's it's safe to say that yes, if you are a registered convicted sex offender that openly predated on children, you should not work around children at least for like, I don't know, some probationary period without a fucking licensed medical professional giving you the go ahead 10 years, 20 years down the line. I don't fucking know. Actually, fuck it, ever, forever, actually. No, nope, forever. <laughs> like, all things considered, you know, go work a Steve Adore job or something. Like, you don't have to be around fucking children, you know? <laughs> yeah, brother, uh, no, brother. Brother, uh. Lots of other jobs out there. When you're not around children, actually, I was going to say fucking poultry plant, but goddamn, there's fucking kids working there too nowadays in America. Shouts out to Arkansas for lowering the fucking, uh, you know, child labor laws there and many other states too. So kids are working everywhere nowadays. I guess you can't really uh, get another job as a pedophile, it seems. <laughs> I'm a stevedore Lamau. Please don't send him our way. Stevedore is another one of my favorite jobs because it sounds so stupid to say. It's like, I, I gotta, I gotta put that back in the rotation. Cause I always, cause I always just talk about, I talk about accountants when I'm talking about fucking white collar jobs. I talk about HVAC business owners when I talk about the petite bourgeois reactionary pieces of shit. And usually when I talk about union, uh, uh, individuals like that are in a union, I say Stevedore. And I haven't been talking about stevedores in a minute. Stevedore? Dude, it's the it's the best. Are today stevedores unionized? Uh, usually, yes. It's a good old union job. I don't know if this guy's in a union, but... 
parents. Speaking in the docuseries, MJ details how her daughter Brandy booked a background role in one episode and began corresponding with Handy via email. She let me read it, and it was a very innocent yep, email. It just talked local. about the shows that he had been working on. But what she thought was seemingly harmless progressed into him sending her an explicit photo. Girl and while MJ when? didn't go to the police herself, what? Handy was finally arrested in April 2003 and charged with multiple felony counts involving inappropriate acts and material. Keep your trust in God and don't forget me. You and all the kids are why I work for free half the week. I love you, Jason. He pled no contest and received a six-year sentence. Shockingly, he wasn't the only convicted predator employed by Nickelodeon. Registered sex offender Ezel Channel, another Nickelodeon employee, was arrested in 2005. When you look at having multiple child predators who worked at Nickelodeon, it raises some confusing questions on who to hold accountable. Brian Peck's connection to John Wayne Gacy. Hi, I'm not just Pickle Boy, but I'm also a trained professional who works here on the set of all that. You can tell by my very important looking headset. Like Jason Handy, Brian Peck was well known at Nickelodeon, though the acting and dialogue coach was much more involved and even appeared on screen at times. Kyle Sullivan recalled a get-together he attended at Peck's home where he found a weird portrait of a clown. Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around oh, and on the part. back it said, to Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. He learned that the man had a disturbing, quote, pen pal relationship with John Wayne Gacy, a convicted serial killer who targeted young men. Even at his age, Sullivan knew this was strange. However, he alleged that other guests, including adults and parents, also saw Peck's collection of letters and art from Gacy. In his nightstand next to his bed, and he like pulls them out and starts showing them to me. Your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you've known them for that long, even in the face of like this really bad sign. Drake Bell was John Doe. Have you ever told your story publicly before? I have never told my story publicly. Quiet On Set centered its third episode on Drake Bell, former star of The Amanda Show and Drake and Josh. For the first time, the actor-musician detailed the alleged abuse he suffered at the hands of Brian Peck as a young actor. You know, anytime I would have an- Wait, what do you mean alleged abuse? No, you can say abuse at that point. It is like cr a criminal conviction came. It, it's not, nope, not, not alleged. Audition or any time I needed to work on dialogue or anything. <laughs> this is one of the issues with AI scripts. You know what I mean? They probably fucking, they're like <laughs> covering their bases, but like, no, nope, she, I mean, he, he was confirmed. Uh, it's not alleged, you know? Yeah, abuse beyond a, yeah, beyond reasonable doubt. Convicted by a jury of peers, you know, they saw. I somehow ended up back at Brian's house. And it just got worse. His platypus back? He's not back. He said every game my team lost is rigged. Damn, he was in here in the morning. He was in here in the morning. I miss him. Uh, oh, here's another one. Oh boy, what a week, y'all. Uh, let's talk about it. My name is Jack. I was a child actor on Zoe 101, one of this guy's shows. I also worked in his production department as an intern on iCarly, and I worked in the writer's room on Salmon Cat and Victorious. This Max documentary that was recently released did a really good job of uncovering the details of workplace toxicity, specifically on Dan Schneider's shows for Nickelodeon. We could talk about the massages. We could talk about the fact that he would literally count his gold coin collection in front of his crew who was living paycheck to paycheck. We could talk about how sometimes he would bring out a shotgun to scare one of the writers when they were working at his house. We could talk about the high level conversations I wasn't supposed to hear about how Nickelodeon didn't want to recommend antidepressants for Jeanette McCurdy after her mom died for fear that she might kill herself and make the network look bad. But what I do want to talk about is never letting this stuff happen again. This is an entire industry built on hope and dreams and adrenaline and wish fulfillment. 
And that can be a very dangerous thing for megalomaniacs to wield. Even in posting this, I'm a little afraid. Is this going to screw up my career moving forward? I have no idea, but I think it's important and it needs to be said. Because if my silence ensures the perpetuation of environments I don't want to work in anymore, then what is the point of working in them? And until Homeboy goes on 60 Minutes to answer some questions from some real journalists and not a cast member of his who he... I wouldn't... I would not bet on 60 Minutes doing a good job. Unless, like, it reaches a certain point where, like, it is objectively bad. Like, an R. Kelly-style situation. You know what I mean? Like, or not objectively bad. It is objectively bad. But I mean, like... In the public perception, like, people are demanding some kind of, uh, people are demanding some kind of, like, actual, um, what is it, restitution? I don't know. Like, yeah, it needs to reach, like, actual critical mass, exactly. Like, people are demanding reckoning. And only then will they maybe do some decent diligent journalism he's paying to be there apology not accepted <sighs> where the fuck's platypus when you need him no i mean alexa nicholas hit a money spread on dan wow we got money spread videos and progressive moral compasses. And you know we ain't come alone. We brought the homie Alexa Nicholas. Alexa, hit this nigga with a money spread. <laughs> she was on Zoe 101. She has first-hand experience with you and doesn't fuck with you. <laughs> Dan Schneider looks like someone juiced him like an orange. Oh my God. M Hut is so much smoke for Dan Schneider. Jesus Christ. Pretty funny. Yeah, Alexa is a, is a Haas and Abbey head as well. Chatter. Call a bag boy. Crazy sports story developing right now involving millions of dollars to illegal betting ring from Shohei Otani bank accounts. I know, man. I already covered it. Yes, I, I am aware that it is strange that we have another high-profile Hazanabi head who is also an Alex variant. I know. I know. It is strange to me, too. I don't know why all of my, all of my content creator, journalist, politician... Friends of the show are all named Alex or Alexa or Alexi. I guess the only Alex was Alexi Navalny that I wasn't a, fr a friends of the show of. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that happened. You could say Alex Jones is a bit of a Hasanabi head. and worse and worse. The acting and dialogue coach became a constant presence, managing to turn Bell and others against his father, who was his manager. Peck was arrested just months after Jason Handy in 2003. Due to his age at the time, Bell's name was kept hidden and he was referred to as John Doe, something very few people knew until now. Fortunately, there was no therapy and was left to my own devices, which at that age probably isn't the best thing. Peck's famous supporters. Drake Bell was in attendance at the day of the sentencing for Brian Peck in October 2004. 
Though he was relieved his tormentor was finally caught, Bell was shocked to see the amount of support he received from notable people in the industry. His entire side of the courtroom was full. Full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. These included Growing Pains cast members Alan Thicke and Joanna Kearns, the Amanda Show crew members Rich and Beth Carell, along with actors James Marsden and Taryn Killam. In 2024, Boy Meets World stars Will Friedell and Ryder Strong claimed their letters were based on misinformation. You know, he, he had us, had Ryder and I write letters of support to the judge. And these are things we did. And, and again, we did them because we were then lied to. We weren't told the whole story. But it doesn't change the fact that we did it. Peck pled no contest, was sentenced to 16 months in prison, and was required to register as a sex offender. Still, he went on to work in Hollywood, even briefly on Disney Channel's The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. There are not enough protections in place to keep even convicted sexual predators off of kids' TV shows. Did you watch Quiet on Set? Let us know in the comments below. This is a house of horrors. No kidding. How Jesus Christ, dude. Oh shit, Philly, I made a video as well. That's crazy. All right. Uh, there's a couple things I wanted to look at. Brrr, what was I going to do here? Uh, they came after my boy, Sean the Goat King. Oh, there was this little piece here. Turns out plans were scrapped for a Trump rally in Arizona with two sources citing a desire to save money and attend a more politically advantageous event in Ohio last weekend. But that means that Trump's last trip to Arizona remains October 9th, 2022. He is too broke to have a fucking rally. Oh my God. There was that part that I was going to cover. The other thing I was going to cover is, is Kyle Rittenhouse. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, exonerated i guess or not found guilty of of uh murdering people at a black lives matter rally rally kyle rittenhouse that one is doing a speaking tour um here he is getting booed at uh in what what school did he go to he was chased out of uh of one of the speaking engagements that he had I think it was in Memphis. Juneteenth. We shouldn't celebrate Martin Luther King Day. We should be working those days. It's called Katani Brown Jackson and Affirmative Action Hire. He's talked nonsense about George Floyd. And he said he'd be scared if a black pilot was on a plane. Does that not seem racist? I don't know anything about that. Oh. <laughs> then answer no, no, no. Does that seem racist? Is a yes or no question, Kyle? Why do these fucking losers get speaking deals and you don't? Do you just turn them down? You're an important voice king? What do you mean, dude? There's no fucking multi-millionaire backed, like, campus organization like Turning Point USA that's, like, greasing the fucking wheels of people, like, uh, to get people like me on the speaking circuit. The last time I had a speaking engagement, it was actually literally fucking canceled, by the way. Shouts out to, I think it was either Loyola or... I think it was either Loyola or, or Pepperdine or whatever, one of those schools. I was supposed to speak on the strikes that were ongoing uh, and the importance of labor unions to uh, to the, the, fuck, what was it? I think it was like the, no, not Chicago. No, 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 uh, LMU. No, it was, it was out here. It was out here. I was, I was supposed to do that. And then it got canceled after October 7. It was, I was going to talk to film students. I think it was Loyola Marymount. Yeah. And... Um, there was a speaking engagement fee, and I was going to obviously give it to the strike funds. But I know this is going to sound like I'm trolling, but serious question, why not speak for free? You reach other places asking to speak. Wait, what? First of all, I would do it for free, and I have done it for free many times. I've spoken at like rallies, protests, things of that nature. But... 
when we're talking about when we talk about like a university speaking engagement oftentimes there's like security and a shit ton of like back end stuff it costs money they don't just like let people come and speak for free especially at a college also not only that but i just described to you that they were willing to pay me and i was going to take the money and give it to the labor unions Of course it costs money. Anyway. Just call Harvard. Hey, I can yap a bit. I got Twitch clout. Yeah. Anyway, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Okay. And there's no such thing as a free speech. You understand me? Especially not at the top of the hour. When there's a three minute ad break, this is the only part of the broadcast where you get paywalled a little bit. Unless you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Is it just money? Like, if you don't got enough, you can speak there, or they still wouldn't let a leftist? Wait, what? Here's the term I have right now. You become a C tier streamer next to Ice Poseidon by Kai, almost a B. Well done. I'm glad that Kai Sinat thinks I'm uh, Ice Poseidon tier as a fucking streamer. <laughs> I personally don't give a shit, but. Sorry, almost an Ice Poseidon tier streamer by uh, Kai's Metrics. Um, do people think you're supposed to like go out and give speeches for fun? You see this insane TikToker's videos? You cannot build a holy land for your children on the mass grave of other children. Come build a better world with Pookie playing the new World of the Rings game. <laughs> That's insane. Um, what was I, what was I going to do? There was something else I wanted to say and look at. We covered the Otani thing. I don't have time for the, some more news. I don't have time for Bernie Moreno thoughts on Ken Carson. Yeah. I wanted to do gaming time, except, uh, I don't think I can do gaming time. You want to know why? Because I realize it's Jenk's birthday. And I have Jenk's birthday dinner. 